To get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang, support us by clicking the description link. So? Are we doing shots or are y'all getting stuff going, man? What no, t- I didn't have a uh, have it repaired for uh, oh, the next shit, one, really? so sorry. We don't have anything? We all don't want to do a shot? I mean, we can if you want. Yeah, let's do a shot. So I do have a case tonight for you guys. We are going to Argentina for this one. No one has done this case, I can promise you that. And it's really obscure, but it is well known in Argentina. Mm. She is, she is the biggest serial killer in Argentina. Mm. And so if you live in Argentina, you know this case. But unfortunately, it's not really too popular anywhere else besides Argentina. And which is attracted me to it. And there's not a, like a book or anything about it. There is one book that I can get if you guys really want me to, to go. It's written by the son of the killer, but. Cheers. Hold on. Do I have to sing? Well, no, because this isn't necessarily for a killer. So. Yes. I feel like. And, and right, I want you to say, it. this is for you, John. This is for you, John. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. Uh, Cheers. 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 Why do y'all sound so miserable? I hate bugs. <coughs> <coughs> so what'd you guys think about that last case? Crazy, eh? You gonna think of that next time you drink tequila? No. I prefer to just <laughs> wipe it from my memory, but... They know. do say that, right, about tequila? It makes you crazy? It makes it makes me want to fight people. Does it make you want to rip out someone's intestines? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it doesn't. I have to say. <laughs> Where's Argentina? What is uh, that border, Jen? What is Argentina border? Brazil. No, it does not. Um, I think it does. I'll give you a thousand dollars right now if it borders Brazil. Who? Me or her? Well, I mean, John. I... Let me just say, John does not pay up on his bets. <laughs> <laughs> so the other day he's like, "I'll give you a million dollars if you if I do this." Oh, it doesn't. That's Brazil up here, yo. True. Oh, you owe me ten billion trillion dollars. What are numbers? <laughs> All right, we're going to Mexico Street. I don't have the specific address at all, but supposedly it's a a nice neighborhood. (laughs) And Argentina is known for what? What type of meat? Goat. Would you like to supply the correct answer there, Nicole? (laughs) I'm going to say steak. There you go. They're known for their cows. They they really beat off their cows, you know, and get them all nice and... Stop it. They do. That's what they do. That's what anus beef is. Angus. Anus... No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So this is out in the country here. Argentina is a beautiful place. I'm sure Nicole can tell us all about it. Never been. Oh my God. Would you imagine living here? It sucks. Anyway, we're actually going to a really wealthy port tonight. And I'm actually starting the story. And I know you guys haven't heard this before. I really couldn't get too much on it. But we're talking about a Carmen Zuelma del Giorgio. Do you want to put it on the screen? I can pronounce it for you. No. This lady right here is Carmen right here. Oh, she looks like a, a grandma. Well, she she is an older lady, yeah. No, I mean I meant that in a good way. No, she is an older lady. So we're actually starting in March twenty fourth, nineteen seventy nine. This lady Carmen goes to her cousin's house, uh, Yia, because they're really good friends. Number one. Plus, the cousin really wants to talk to her. It's been a year now since Carmen had invested 20 million pesos into a an investment portfolio that her cousin had found right now carmen's husband was a business executive at one point then he passes away all that wealth which is apparently a lot goes to let me see how much pesos are worth in 1979 are they worth anything now 75 cents pesos 1980 uh 1980 whoa shit yeah you're right the mexican peso in 1980 is worth about a dollar shit so yeah it's basically 20 million dollars she invested into her cousin who her cousin yaya is wealthy and she's really good at financial securities anyway it's been a year since Carmen has invested tw- literally $20 million into her cousin's new venture, her new investment portfolio. So she's really happy. And because in three days from now, this is March 24th. So on March 27th, she's going to get paid out. All those earnings and dividends or whatever, she's going to get paid out. And it's, you know, multi- multiples of three. So she's about to make $60 million. Right? Mm. 
So she goes to visit her cousin and and when she returns back to her own estate, she starts feeling really sick. She walks up the stairs and at the top of the stairs, she holds her heart like she's having a heart attack. Oh, she tumbles down the stairs of her own estate. Oh, no. Now, she has a housekeeper who calls the police. They come over there and they take her away. And the cause of death is just cardiac arrest. When she falls down the stairs and dies, the cousin shows up, Yaya. She talks to the 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 housekeeper and actually goes upstairs and retrieves some things, some paperwork and, and some other stuff like that, like a phone book and then she leaves now her daughters carmen's daughters go to the police and and they say listen this you know my my mother our mother was in great shape there has been no complications with her heart or anything else we want you to look into this initially her cause of death like i said was cardiac arrest however they re-exhumed the body and did a toxicology report and they found a large amount of cyanide in her system okay so at this point you have the cousin who took 20 million dollars, 20 million pesos of Carmen's and invested it. And then three days before she's getting paid out, this lady falls down the stairs. Mm. So Yaya had been visiting her and Carmen's daughters going through her records, found a stack of promissory notes for money she had loaned to Yaya and even documents saying that their mother had allowed Yaya to run her bookkeeping. All right. Do, do you want to tell us what a promissory note is? It's Nicole? like a prop, something that you will pay in the future. All right. Have you guys, anyone heard of this? I mean, it's a very, mm -hmm. s very small case, but in Argentina, you know this case. If if any of you guys were from Argentina, you would know this case. It's the biggest one over there. Hmm. Gaia is a very strange looking female. She's, well, she's very know. different looking. Is she, okay. is she transgendered? No, no, this is 1980. I don't think they, I don't yeah. think that's a thing in Argentina. Well, it's uh, a yeah. thing everywhere. Be, yeah. Well, let me just show her to you now. This is Yaya right here. Her name is Yaya Marano. A very distinctive uh, features. Distinctive. Yeah, very long face. And she's got this weird tan. Chin, very tan. This uh thing going on. Well, she's older. Yeah. I think she's she's really pretty because she's so unique and she's got the hair and everything. Mm -hmm. But kind of glamorous. Yeah, glamorous. Very glamorous. She's rich. Okay. She she wears, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but she's wearing nothing but designer clothes. She shops at the best. I mean, they, look at this pearl necklace or whatever down mm -hmm. here. I don't know what this is. But her earrings. She's very well put together. She would look like she is good at investments. If one can look like that. Yeah. Now, the housekeeper actually goes to the police because Yaya goes to the house right when her cousin falls down the stairs and she gets all these documents. So the housekeeper goes to the police and says the following. She says that this is weird. This is the third friend I have that has died and it's only March. Oh, oh that is all there. Yeah. <laughs> There we're is all, something we're strange. All, we're all three of them investors? <laughs> because, I mean... Well, that's one way to make a Ponzi scheme work. There you go, Nikwiz. You got it right. What did you say? Ponzi scheme. So what's a Ponzi scheme? A scam. So it's a pyramid uh, in which you... Well, no, do you know what a Ponzi scheme is? And I'm not trying to make you... I mean, it's Like a pyramid scheme? Yeah. No, no, not a pyramid scheme. No, it's like a sc you're scamming. We watch a lot of American Greed, which is the which is a great show, by the way, which is the only reason I know. Uh -huh. But do you want to explain what a Ponzi scheme Please is? Please do. Most people don't know, which is fine. I just want to go ahead and explain it. So, it, so people do make money on Ponzi schemes, but it is at the premise you're constantly like bringing somebody else in to pay so that you're paying off the first investors. Yeah. Jen, I've got this great thing that you can invest in. You invest in this property and I can pay you some profits from this company or whatever when John pays me money. So I take John's money and I'm going to give you some yeah. money and then I need John. I need to find another investor after John so that I can pay him some money. But all the while, like it's just like a little profit it, the person that's making the money is the person that's yeah, running so the whole scheme. Go there ahead. there might not be a property or anything. Right. Jen, I found this great investment, this new security that's out, this company that just IPO'd. Why don't you give me $50,000 and then I can show you instant profits within the first month. You give me $50,000. All right. Yep. Got it. Got it. I got a month to, to show you profits. I go to Nicole. N Nikwiz, I got this great security. This company just IPO'd. She gives me $50,000. All 
I come back to Jen. Jen, you're killing it right now. Your investment has made you ten thousand dollars. In fact, I'm just taking that out of Nicole's. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you're not actually investing in anything. Right. You're just it's made up. It's made up, but you're just taking other people's money as you bring them in. Got it. But there's at the end of the day, no one ever makes any money because you're just redistributing right. someone else's investment to you. Got it. To keep this thing going while you build up all these people. That's a Ponzi scheme in general. Now, I don't know. I guess the guy's name that in America that started it was Ponzi or something. Mm -hmm. I didn't really look it up. Yep. But I don't know. Oh, it's like his like, name was Ponzi. Oh, OK. Yeah. But wasn't it after 1979? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a pretty recent term. But this not only in Argentina was a big Ponzi scheme. It was the first. And not only that, you know, when it comes time to, OK, Thanks for the investment. Now you're, I'm about to pay you all this money back. You know, she ain't just got shit. She just kills them off. <laughs> That's just killer. Damn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is her right here. That's one way for, because ultimately, like, the whole point of the scheme is somebody, like, you're getting paid. Yeah, And yeah. so you keep believing it. You keep yeah, reinvesting. That's, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So if you run out of people, one way to get out of it would be to kill them yeah. off, I suppose. It kind of reminds me of, like, we, you know, for my retail job, we have to watch, like, this money, money laundering thing. Like, how the people will come in and be like, okay, like, can you give me change for a 20? And then you, like, as you're getting your thing, it's like you get, you get your two tens out. And they're like, oh, no, actually. Can you give me the five um, and five ones and I'll give you this? And they like try to like and you and they end up shorting you because like you're trying to. Hmm, I, I know it's not the same thing, but that's what came this came to my mind. I was going to talk about this anyway. Um, we are taking on investors for Talco Cast. <laughs> 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 if you would like to be the first um, in on Let's the in on the ground floor. Let's see. We have eight people in live chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> you give me a thousand dollars, I can give you a return. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh uh, unless you want to pay a lot of fucking debt. <laughs> I've had two people say, dude, I believe in what you're doing. I want to invest. Like in Talco Cast. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? Like pay <laughs> off our debt? <laughs> like, what the fuck? What do you mean? Pay off my student loans. Like, what do you okay. think we're fucking making a shit ton of money? <laughs> like, what the fuck? That's kind that of, they think that. So I know. <laughs> Yaya Marano was the most famous serial killer in Argentina. Her real name, and you probably heard of this name, was Maria de las Mercedes Bola Ponte de Marano. Oh yeah, definitely. Heard of her. <laughs> But she goes by Yaya. Her moniker is the Poisoner of Montserrat. She was found guilty of three homicides. Only three? She killed three investors, one her cousin, a neighbor, and then her best friend. <laughs> Like, best the, friends until the end uh, like yikes. her cousin a neighbor and her best friend i mean it's not even like i mean you're killing people that are close to you <laughs> yeah, what the fuck too like there that's a co pretty common link yeah the the story has All a really crazy payouts you know the story has a really crazy conclusion so y'all just stick with it it's it ends in the most ridiculous fucking way you can ever imagine Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about her. In 1930, she was born in Corrientes in Argentina. Comes from a very humble family, not money mongers at all. Her mother was a housewife. Her father was an army lieutenant colonel. She was raised very structurally. But go to her now during the murder time and her investments. She's buying all these clothes and these earrings and she's putting this persona on of wealth and success. So she has no formal education at all. She actually, before she started this Ponzi scheme, she starts borrowing money from family just to buy all these nice things. And then once they're calling their loans in, basically like, where's, I thought you need this money to start this new business. And all you did was buy Gucci. Like, what the fuck? Where's... I needed to look nice in order to go to the bank. Yeah. She would say stuff like that. So she dressing nice like this got her into these, these nice nice events and at one of these events she meets her husband Antonio Morano which was a lawyer and apparently she loved him even though he dies of mysterious circumstances <laughs> so <laughs> Now, before we go any further, I found this one article by this professor, and I wanted to 
throw it in there. It is about this case. And Argentina is pretty small. There's not a lot of serial killers running around. But this professor, an Osvaldo de Paulo, he is a professor of languages and literature at Austin Peel State University. He documents this case and other cases in Argentina. And what he says is kind of interesting. He says, in a nutshell, that when true crime books and docu documentaries, if they're released in one year, it directly it directly uh, reflects the economic the economic uh, outlines of the the country at the time. Now you can't think about America or anything else because this is Argentina is extremely small compared to like America or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he says that in 1994, there were 14 true crime books that were launched that year. That was when Argentina was attempting to transfer into a globalized economy. So it was total yeah. chaos. He also says in 2001, there were a, an abnormal amount of true crime books. So true crime books equal murder, right? I mean, they're, yeah. they're just reflecting of the murder. Right. And they actually, they don't use true crime in, in Argentina. It's very interesting. It's true crime, but it's it's in novel format. So it's hmm. it's more like historical fiction type of thing. But okay. I don't know why they don't write true crime in Argentina, but apparently they do not. Hmm. Because as, as I'll say, this guy who we're talking about now, he was a PhD student at the University of Kentucky. And at that time, he took a course on what is called detective fiction in Latin America. So instead of true crime, you have detective fiction, okay. which may be the same thing. But fiction is not true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, so are they more like maybe murder mystery novel type murder stuff? mystery novels? But they're all based on true crime. Okay. I don't, I don't based know. on true events, but it's, it's yeah. fictional dramatized. Yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. He says, quote, financially, the country was going through a dictatorship and it was an unstable economy, basically. So Morano ends up killing these women because she doesn't have their money. This was one of the big killers at the time. And during the time, the country was going through a dictatorship, which was pure chaos. I don't know. I just wanted to throw that in there. I thought yeah. it was kind of yeah. interesting. You know? Interesting. I don't know. I studied the transformation from newspaper articles into the a novel, short fiction, film, and TV series. I looked at the transformations. These hard-boiled stories are a reflection of society, what's happening in society. The transformation has a social connotation. It's a means of trying to denounce the social problems we have as a society. So I don't know if that relates to any other country, but I don't know. Maybe like the UK. I don't, I don't know. If y'all are going through, like, let's say y'all went through Brexit or whatever. Was there like a shit ton of true crime books that came out that year? Maybe, maybe, mm. you know. I don't know if it's a link or not, but... Anyway. Just like how the queen just died. Yeah. Oh, my God. Freaking literally everywhere is queen's face. It's like, Jesus. So this is the next victim right here. This is one of her best friends. So all these murders happen in, in relative succession. Murano's friend, Leela, she died. And she was also coming up on this repayment. She also died of cyanide poison. Yaya Murano, she would make these petite fours. I never had one. I guess it's like a cake. Oh, petty four? Yeah. Petty They're four. like little, little cake. Like Petty little, four. They're like this big, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit smaller, but they're little squares. The time was coming up. A year has passed when she has to produce a profit for these women. Mm -hmm. However, she has been spending it on nothing but herself. Right, right. She's got no money left to give them their dividends. She has absolutely no money left. She has not been recruiting new members into her Ponzi scheme either. S yeah, exactly. Only three members. So, yes. so I know, right? <laughs> like, dude, fucking begin like newbie. If you're gonna do it, do it right. <laughs> yeah, fucking do a Ponzi scheme, bro. Like, like, all to me. So anyway, this Taco Cast investment is a fucking great deal. <laughs> a couple days before she was supposed to pay out, she would invite the, the women to her house, this estate that was once owned by her husband. She would give them these petite fours and basically little cakes filled with cyanide. They would die and there would be accidental death. The cyanide wouldn't actually kick in until they left the home and usually got to their own home as well. She was at the wakes, all three of the wakes. She was the most distressed out of anyone. She was crying more than anyone else. You know, mm, putting on a show. Yeah. To so, make it just to think, oh, it couldn't possibly be. Yeah, yeah. Here are the victims right here. I mean, I know there's a very small case, guys. There's not much on it, but the victims are right there. So all in all, there are three. There could have been five, including her husband, but we'll never know. 
She was arrested in 1979 at her house. There was, quote, overwhelming evidence. So obviously she's in prison forever, right? Well, this is Argentina. So given the sentencing that we witnessed with uh, little Petey, (laughs) and I know, oh, Oh. she's... She's free. She's fab, bro. (laughs) Is this recent? She must have spent like 30 years in prison. 40, 50. No. For three murders, she was convicted and sentenced to 16 years in prison. I was going to say 15. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) With overwhelming evidence. 16 years in prison. And this is the, uh, this is, this is crazy I don't crazy understand right here. the whole like cap on, on, se- on like years for murder in countries. Like this doesn't make sense to me. She was arrested in 1979, overwhelming evidence, sentenced to 16 years, but served only 10 because she had, because she had good behavior. Now, when she got out, this is the the crazy part. When she got out, because the judge was so lenient to her, she actually sent the judge a box of chocolates. With cyanide poisoning? (laughs) I don't know. He just threw them out. Oh, my God. (laughs) He just threw them out. Oh, my God. (laughs) Honestly, if, if a murderer, okay, if a murderer sends a judge a gift afterwards, like, clearly, hopefully he knew, like, he fucked up. Like, if... You know? Yeah, he said in the news that he just threw them out. He should have tested them. Maybe he put her back in prison. But no one knows if they were cyanide or not. She got out. She lived a long life, but don't worry. She got married. Her husband left her. She got married twice more, but they figured out who she was because she was going by a different name and they didn't want anything to do with her. April 2014 is the last news we have about her. She dies in a nursing home, quote, without even remembering who she was. Oh, that's kind of sad. She died of dementia mm. in a nursing home. So that's her at uh, right before she died, I guess. Still fab, but it's a very small story, but it's the biggest in Argentina. Wow. And I don't know. There's honestly not. I try to translate as much as possible, but there's not a lot. What do you guys think? Kind of small. Like I said, I was in a pinch. I'm doing these this big story for next week, so can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. That was a good one, though. Yeah, that was interesting. <sighs> but I don't 16 know. Sixteen years. Sixteen. Fucking because messy. not only was it three murders, like also a, a Ponzi scheme, fraud, yeah. like those are additional charges. Yeah. Yeah. And to only have that, oh. do you think they were lenient on on her because she was a female or like? I mean, I, I I'm honestly I don't know. I Maybe mean, they thought she wouldn't live past the 16 years. They knew that she was... No, she lived a long time after that. There's... Pic, there's she's actually really famous. There's no, fo- I know, but she was older, like when it happened. I'm saying maybe they thought she, like, maybe they thought at the time that she wouldn't live past the 16 years. I mean, she, no, she was only like 40 when she was arrested. Oh, yeah. And there's pictures of her. There's plenty of pictures if you look up her name, Yaya Murano. She is with celebrity after celebrity. She became like a hit, hmm. a celebrity hit. And there's, there's photos with uh, different celebrities and stuff. Like, this is her right here. She's doing news interviews. Hmm. Yada yada yada. Interesting. Like I've seen pictures with celebrities posing with her and stuff. Wow. But yeah, she dies at the oh, end. Oh, that's obviously. an interesting portrait. That painting. Yeah. Oh yeah, little petty force in you know, a skull. So that's but, funny. But the fact that she, I mean, look at her right here. I mean, you know. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like Elton John. I know. I just we missed the concert. I know. I oh, wanted to go. I it didn't was even too expensive. Know. Yeah. Look at her. I mean, she killed three people. Not only three people, but her cousin, her best friend, and her neighbor. And then she sends the judge a box of chocolates. Life is like a box Fucking of chocolates. Crazy man. Anyway, I know it was kind of a small story, but I hope you guys liked that. Yeah, it was good. So next week we'll be back on Skedge, you know, and we'll be on the Discord. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Sounds good. And uh, also happy birthday, Natasha. Yeah. Natasha, yeah. It's your birthday. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anyway, um, well, I love you guys. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people. California people. California. Where are you at? Where are you at, California people? Let's look at the de- the the glory hole death. Oh boy. Okay, this is not what I thought it was going to be, but okay. <laughs> <sighs> what do you notice here? It looks like a hole in the middle of that water. <laughs>
This is what's called the glory hole. Oh, what what that's is disappointing. it? Though? It's a Fuck hole. Fuck you. We'll talk about disappointing. <laughs> well, that's just It's you, a fucking hole. You let us on. <laughs> well, what's like where does it where does it go? I just thought that people were just gonna get their dicks chopped off and then get stabbed yeah, to death. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what you let us to I, believe. Yeah. All right. So I definitely thought that's where we were heading tonight. All right. So this is called the glory hole. That's it's the real name of it. <laughs> it's a fucking spillway. <laughs> Is that natural? Like, or is that man-made? No, it's man-made, but someone, uh, there's two people that died trying to swim in it for some reason. Well, but why would you do that? You know what, Jen? I don't know. Is it, so is it like a black <laughs> hole in the water? Pretty much, yeah. Oh. But where does it go to? All right, let me show you. Yeah, we want answers. Let's see, uh, let's see if there's a video of it. Has any, you California people, anyone, I, I'm kind of, what's it called again? I really don't want to type in glory hole. What was it? Barry something? <laughs> Barry Essa. Anybody been here? No. no. Okay. This isn't the story that I'm, I'm talking about, but I just kind of wanted to, uh, I thought it was really fucking interesting, you know? So there's another glory hole story? Huh? No, no, oh. this is it. But this is the, uh, this is the glory hole. No, water's obviously down. It's so pretty though. Uh, yeah, that's it right is there. Is that the Pacific Coast Highway? I don't know. So this is it. Well, but isn't that crazy? It just goes straight fucking down. Like a well. Like that doesn't yeah. look like something I would want to jump into. Oh, so the water, when the tide rises, the, it goes Whoa. into there. Isn't that fucking so it doesn't, crazy? So it doesn't over flood the, the, the highway. Okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I feel like you could just watch a video of water going into that like that for hours yeah. and be like mess. It's well, fascinating. Yeah. I know. That's why I wanted to to at least talk about it. I know I don't wow. have a Wow. Isn't that cool? That's like that oddly cool. soothing. If yeah. you guys are into Okay, yeah. So if someone goes down there, yeah, you dead. Yeah. What where do you what are the like how do you get out of there? You, you can't. Don't. You don't. Because well, where does it go? go? Boy, I'll show you where it goes. Does it like the trash compactor where it's like blades and stuff? <laughs> no. <laughs> it does look like a butthole. Look at this. Wow. That reminds me of a black hole. This would be the Yes. The uh what do you call that that radiation band, Jen? I don't know. The the hulking radiation, Jen. Okay. Sorry. By Stevie Hawking. Stevie? <laughs> your, your BFF Stevie? <laughs> it's like a black hole. Shran says it goes to dead. <laughs> Now, this is going to kind of upset you guys. There is a video of a, a duck going into the hole. No, I don't want to watch <gasps> no, that. No, I don't want to watch that. But? <sighs> no. But it survived. <laughs> okay, well, I still don't want to watch it. We think. We think is the we same We think. <laughs> We're not so, sure. like, one duck goes in and possibly another duck flies out? Like, is that what you're saying? You think it survived. <laughs> we want we want answers. In, in another dimension, it moved yeah oh so here's the God. glory hole look at that <laughs> wait Did you go see back it? no oh, i didn't even no. see it all that right everyone sad. watch is right here okay oh! <laughs> that's not funny Honestly, this is the saddest thing i've heard all day <laughs> that's not funny see you're suffering because you laughed that's oh, why the title funny. does say bird swallowed is okay. 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 There you go. <sighs> Jesus. So we can laugh. Oh, so this that's is where, where it comes out. Oh, it's kind of like a water sl water park ride. Yeah. So this is the, the, the glory hole. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm so glad this duck is okay though. <laughs> but yeah. someone did, two people actually tied. The swimmer that died, let me uh, show you. And this isn't really a whole episode, guys. I just wanted to um, make us think that you were talking about a killer. Yeah. Glory hole. But there is a uh, mystery as swimmers discovered giant glory hole in the middle of famous lake. Has anyone been there? I mean, you guys live in California. Have you even heard of this? I mean, this is like, this blew my effing mind. I mean, holy shit. This blew my freaking mind, dude. I mean, look at this fucking bad boy. It's like a hole. That's. I mean, how fucking creepy is that shit that is pretty crazy is this a common thing like i've never i've never I, seen that before i know dude i don't know they the name of it is called the glory hole that's what they call it i mean that's not the actual term but that's what all the papers call it you know it's just fucking nuts is it l allowed to swim in that lake period no okay no it's not so this is the uh, this from the San Francisco Gate right here. So you have 1997 woman sucked into Lake Berryessa spillway. Jesus. Mm. So she was a, a, actually a swimmer. So so you see right here they call it the glory hole. Like that's the fucking name of it. The glory hole spilling. You know. See this um this lady Emily. Sh 
Emily Schwalik, 41, of Davis, was killed Sunday when she was sucked down the spillway Jeez. Monticello Dam. I mean, that's sad. You know, I was laughing because of the uh, duck, but it's very sad. That must sad. have been terrifying. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, honestly, why was she over yeah, there? Yeah, what would you it's, do near there? That's what I'm saying, because they have it blocked off. Did y'all see the, the block? Uh, you see this right here? Yep. Now, yep. I don't know if this was here in 1997, but that was blocked off. And I feel like she was, I, I don't know why she was there. The woman dropped out of sight after gripping the edge of the hole for about 20 minutes, witnesses said. Mm. There has never been a documented case of anyone else falling through the glory hole, said Don Jeez. Burby of Solano Irrigation District. Hmm. I, I mean, mean the current must have been so strong. Was she, how she would have managed to hold on for that long. So it sounds like an accident if she was holding on no, for that long. Right? Yeah, it's an accident. And I looked up, she was a, an accomplished swimmer. And so I'm pretty sure that she was trying to do this on purpose. Not trying to kill herself. Like she purpose. was dared. But is that not fucking effing crazy, guys? Has yeah. anyone ever been there? Mm -mm. I mean, you guys live in California, a lot of you guys. Well, I've, California is a huge state. Yes. I get fairness. it, but I've never, ever even seen this. No, I haven't either. No. I mean, holy shit, dude. I was like, what the fuck? And wh also, why is this coming up in my news feed? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Crazy. It gives Fucking you nuts, it, man. It gives you results based on terms that you previously have searched. Uh, yeah, maybe. There we go. That makes more sense. <laughs> you searching glory holes all yeah. the time. 